Okay, so these are the probabilities of events involving the ideas of not, or, and then uh, odds. Alright, <clears throat> so what we want to do is we want to be able to find the probability that an event will not occur. A lot of times that's easier or more important. Uh, find the probability of one event or a second event occurring. So this is the or. And so that's going to tell us to do something. And then understand and use odds. All right? And so odds are just a slightly different way of representing probabilities where you use what when an event will happen and an event will not happen to create a different type of ratio. Okay? So, I love this slide. Um, the probability of an event not occurring is basically the complement of E. If we know that the probability of an event we can determine the probability that the event will not occur denoted by not E, right? So, <clears throat> this is the idea of sets, right? The complement of E, okay? The event will not occur, and that's denoted by um, P of not E. And so, the probability that an event E will not occur is equal to 1 minus the probability that it will occur. And that's this guy right here. The probability that the complement is not going to occur is equal to 1 minus the event. Okay? Now, of course, it works in reverse too because these two have to sum up to be 1. And then I just like the use of set notation down here uh, at the end. Alright, so let's jump into a problem. If you are dealt one card from a standard 52 card deck, find the probability that you are not dealt a queen. Now, you could go through all of the possibilities of not a queen, but I think what's probably easier is to find the probability of a queen, okay? And so there are four queens in a standard 52 card deck, and so that's going to reduce to one out of 13, which makes sense because there's one queen for every 13 cards in a suit. And so now we can say 1 minus the probability of a queen is going to give us the probability of not a queen. And so now you can see how much easier it is so that 1 minus 1 over 13 is going to give us, well, if I make this a common denominator, right, of 13, then I have 13 on the top, and 13 minus 1 is 12. I'm going to have 12 out of 13 and that's going to give me the probability of not a queen oops and that makes us very happy okay now uh, what about or right we have and and or in our logical connectives um, and in our sets with our unions and intersections so what does the or mean with a probability well for mutually exclusive events a and B are mutually exclusive. It's just impossible for both of them to occur at the same time. All right. So what this means is the probability of A or B happening means that we're going to add. Okay. So if events are mutually exclusive and we're using the or, we're going to add the two probabilities together. All right. So now. If one card is randomly selected from a deck of cards, what is the probability of selecting a king or a queen? Alright, well actually the probability for a king and the, is equal to the probability for a queen because there are both four in a deck of 52, uh, which is going to give us one out of 13, which is what we would expect, right? So the probability of a king or a queen is going to come down to adding 113 plus 113. Now the nice thing about the probabilities is that the denominator is almost always in common. In fact, I, I typically don't reduce the fractions because the total number will be the same all the way across and then I don't have to find a common denominator. So just, just a little hint there. And so the final analysis, we're going to have 2 out of 13. Hopefully this probability makes sense because this means that two cards out of each suit are probable to come up. 
the king, and the queen. And that makes us happy because that is exactly what happens. Right? Now what happens when you don't have mutually exclusive events? You can only draw a king or a queen at any one time. But what if you have a different situation? What if A and B are not mutually exclusive events? Then the probability that A or B will occur is determined by adding their individual probabilities and then subtracting the probability that A and B occur at the same time. Okay? And so, you ha just like we did with the sets, right, that weren't mutually exclusive, we have to subtract off that overlap. That's what we're going to do here. So this is very much related to the idea that we worked on in the sets videos. Okay? So, what could possibly be a non-mutually exclusive event? Well, a lot of times, something will exhibit two characteristics. Like in a group of 25 baboons, 18 enjoy grooming their neighbors, 16 enjoy screeching wildly, while 10 enjoy doing both. So you have 25 baboons that you can pick from, but they display certain characteristics. Some of them like to groom, some of them like to screech wildly, and some of them like to do both. So the both, the enjoy doing both, means that that can happen simultaneously. So that is not mutually exclusive. So when I look at the probability of picking a baboon that grooms, and, or, sorry, and, and let's go ahead and put the or in here, uh, does the screeching thing, Uh, what I'm really looking at is the probability that a baboon likes to groom and the probability that a baboon likes to screech, but I have to subtract out the ones that like to groom and screech. So the probability of the grooming and the screeching, which some of them like to do. So, you know, this is the overlap. This is the non-mutually exclusive part. So it looks like 18 out of 25 like to groom from here, 16 out of 25 like to screech here, and 10 out of 25 like to do both. That's the groom and screech wildly. Again, I am not going to reduce this fraction. Okay. Now if you're doing it in your calculator, you're probably not going to reduce the fraction either, but certainly if you're doing it by hand, I have a common denominator all the way across. And so really, I want 18 plus 24 to give me 34. Now 34 out of 25 is already a probability higher than 1, and that makes this sad. So you can't just add the screeching and the grooming. We do definitely need to get rid of the grooming and screeching baboons that like to do both. And so 34 minus 10 gives us 24 out of 25 monkeys. So base baboons, I'm sorry. So basically there's only one baboon who doesn't enjoy grooming and screeching wildly. You know, I don't know, maybe he's old and, and crusty, but uh, it makes us happy that we did get the right answer. All right? Now, the last part that we want to talk about, our last objective is to talk about odds and uh, probability to odds. So if we know the probability of an event, we can determine the odds in favor or the odds against the event happening. The odds in favor of an event are found by taking the probability that the event will occur and dividing by the probability that the event will not occur. So an odds in favor of an event are the probability of the event over the probability of not of the event. And of course, the reciprocal of that is going to be the odds against the event where you're going to have not E over E. Okay? So, if you want to find the odds in favor of the event, you're looking at the probability of the event and then the probability of not the event. Okay? So, uh-oh, sorry about that. Um, so let's look at, you're rolling a single-sided die and you want to find the odds in favor of rolling a two. Okay? Well, we know that the odds odds, sorry, in favor are going to be the probability of the event over the probability of not the event. 
Okay? So you're going to have the odds in favor are going to be the probability of the event and probability of not the event. Okay? So the probability of the event is basically a 2. That's the, that's the sample space. The probability of not the event is if I roll a 1, 3, uh, 4, sorry, 5, and 6. And so the odds in favor are basically 1 in 5. And I think that's how you read it, right? So the odds, odds in favor are 1 in 5. Okay? Now, that's how you convert a probability to an odds. And it's just a different way of expressing the probability. I like the probability better. We use the probability, but, you know, some people use odds. Okay? So, what if you wanted to take an odd and turn it into a probability so it was easier to work with mathematically, right? So, if the odds in favor of an event E are A to B, then the probability of an event is given by a over A plus B. And hopefully that makes sense because this gives you the total possibilities. This is the event happening plus the event not happening gives you the total amount of the event. Okay? So what am I looking for? What if you say the odds in favor of a particular horse winning a race are 2 to 5? Okay? 2 to 5. Alright? So that means that A is my 2 and B is my 5. And so the probability of this horse winning are 2 over 2 plus 5, which is the same as 2 sevens. And that makes us happy. Okay? So this concludes our video uh, for odds and probabilities. Uh, please go ahead on to the next video.